Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book Paycheck to Purpose, and host of The Ken Coleman Show, where he talks about career and jobs all day long. He's my co-host today. We're going to be talking to you about your life right in front of you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Ben starts this hour in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hi, Ben. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Ken. So grateful to be on the show today. Thank you again for uh, taking my call. Sure. What's up in your world? Well, um, the brief synopsis of the situation is I'm wondering if I should take on an additional student loan um, to go through a coding boot camp um, to, in essence, double my uh, income so that I can uh, accelerate my baby step two progress uh, for my family. Okay. So um, I'm guessing you've not been listening to us for very long. Um, it's been off and on for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Um, I know the short answer would be, of course not. Don't be stupid. Um, that's a good short answer. (laughs) Yes, sir. Um, How much, how much is the boot camp going to (laughs) cost? So the the boot camp is, um, $13,900. And what is your expected increase in income from what now to what then? What would you be making? Um, currently, I'm making um, $38,000 a year, and I would be to bring, bringing that up to anywhere between $75,000 and 85000 depending right. on the position that I would get. All right. That sounds about right. And what's the long-term play in technology for you? Where do you want to go? Um, I, I want to be um, – honestly, my dream job would be to be coding and developing analytics um, software for – professional uh, football program. Okay, great. So you have a huge upside. So the answer is not just simply no, but it's not necessary for you to take out a loan. $13,000, if you really commit to this and you come up with some incredibly intense ways of selling things, three, four, five jobs, you should cash flow this and 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 move forward. So you're going to go find an additional thirteen thousand dollars to pay your way through this and see that income increase, and get through the baby steps faster. But don't go into debt for it. It's not necessary. The boot camp will always be there. How much? So if you got to wait, you got to wait. How much debt do you now have? Um, the quote unquote only debt that we have is a is my master's degree, which is thirty nine thousand in debt. Your master's is in what? Um, music education, but I'm unfortunately no longer able to um, continue in that. Why? Um, I had uh, some bad choices that I made, and I'm just not able to continue teaching right now. Oh, you can't you can't teach in the classroom. That's correct. But you still have a master's in music. Correct. I still have the license. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so is what you've done made it illegal for you to tutor people on an individual basis? Um, no, sir. Okay. All right. And so you can make serious bank doing that. You know that, right? Um, I would, I would yes, open I'm a music tutoring school immediately, private lessons immediately, 50 bucks an hour, and I'd go get me 13000 bucks. You there? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. All right. I mean, uh, traditional classroom teachers tutoring in traditional subjects are making anywhere from 30 to $50 an hour. Uh, you can do online tutoring. You can do in-person private lessons, music lessons of different kinds and tutoring. And with that degree, if you have basic music ability, and I'm guessing you do, for goodness sakes, then... Um, I'm opening a, a tutoring business right now, and I'm going to go like crazy all the time doing nothing but that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you got put in the in timeout based on what you did from what you thought you were going to be, 
And so you, you step back and you accepted a $38,000 position as a reality. And I don't think that's the reality. I don't think that's a reality. It's not. And, and I would also say that beyond the music tutoring, you're doing anything and everything. It doesn't matter now. $20 an hour job, $25 an hour job, you're doing it. Three, four, five of them. To get the 13000 you can amass that pretty quick. Those numbers add up. Get yourself a calculator and literally write down how many hours, how much money per month can I make, do I need to make to quickly get 13000 Do the Or to camp, get the first half. Or the first half. To start the coding and That's get true. the other half while you're finishing. That's right. While but, you're in class. But the idea here is, is that the boot camp will be there, and so will the technology opportunities. So yeah. don't further your debt. Don't put yourself further behind when you don't have to. There's zero reason to do this see the the other thing is this the, the the overall concept ben and for the rest of you out there the only time that the debt system works is if everything works and everything never works so i went thirty nine thousand dollars in debt to get my master's degree in my dream job only it doesn't work mm-hmm and now here I sit, and I'm making thirty-eight thousand, and I can't justify the thirty-nine thousand that I spent in student loans to get a master's degree in music ed uh, because it doesn't work out. Life never goes down this like this little cute little yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. I mean, you just really you you can't keep it. it there's you know the the problem with going to see the Wizard of Oz is there's flying monkeys between here and there. <laughs> That's the problem. And so you you, you got to count on the flying monkeys. They're part of the program. And so when you do that, all of a sudden the debt looks doesn't look so delicious. But yeah. when you assume everything's is a clean path of and everyone's following the speed limit and no one's talking on their cell phone while they're driving beside you and no one's eating a Big Mac while they're driving beside you and no one is putting on their makeup while they're driving beside you and so there's never any danger on the highway when you make that assumption in order for your debt idea to play out you've set yourself up for the flying monkeys you're going to get you're going to get hit and that's what happened to Ben on the first round and I don't want that to happen to him on the second round so when you pay cash for it on the second round even if the flying monkeys knock you off you don't have any debt that's exactly right i got the education but i don't have any debt that's right and so let's go do it let's go pay for it roll up your sleeves work like a wild man all you're going to be doing Ben is working that's it just work 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 and you don't have to worry you won't die from it Right before you die from hard work, you'll pass out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's right. Someone will be there to catch you. By the way, there's a return on effort when we don't have to take a loan out that we're going to just in the distance pay off. We say, I've got to gut it out, hustle it out big time to come up with thirteen grand to change my life. Boy, the return on that effort is so much better. You're going to find yourself paying better attention, by the way, in boot camp. Uh, yeah, most people get better grades in grad school than they did in beer pong school yeah that's also right. known as undergrad <laughs> this is the ramsey show Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. I love this guy. I love his books. I'm so glad I got to hang out with him today. Uh, Back at Christmas, uh, two different people gave me the book Comfort Crisis. If two people give you a book, even if it's on weight loss, you should take it seriously. And uh, Comfort Crisis is a serious book. It is a great read. And I got to know Michael through that. And I had him on with Mike Rowe and I and a couple other guys as we're talking about the status of work ethic, the state or the, uh, I don't know, the condition of lack of work ethic in America today. We did an event on that uh, a few months ago that was highly successful. So when we heard Michael was going to be in town, we put him on a bunch of our podcasts and asked him to stop in here on his new book, Scarcity Brain. Welcome, my friend. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on the huge success on both of these books. Uh, Comfort Crisis is... uh, you know, it kind of came on a little bit late. It was a late bloomer, but it's become a huge book. Yeah, like a good horse, man. It breaks late, I guess. Yeah. Um, I was surprised. I was as surprised as you are. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, I'm just, uh, I, I love a, a book that breaks late like that because that means it's got legs. It'll be with us for a while because the contents is so, so strong. Okay, so scarcity brain mm-hmm. versus obviously abundance brain, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the both sides of it, but the the human lizard brain for survival teaches us to think scarcity first, right? Correct. We hone in on scarcity. We're very sensitive to scarcity cues, which is basically pieces of information in our environment that make us think things are scarce, and our reaction is to acquire more. I think I'm hungry, forward. but it's really I'm just low on sugar. <laughs> yes, you think you're hungry, <laughs> too low on sugar. You think you need to buy that third thing on Amazon Prime for the day, and so you do it. You think you need more information, so you spend more time on Twitter, on and on and on. All these things um, that I think we overdo in life today um, track back to that they were things that would have given us a survival advantage in the past. It does lead us to obesity. It does lead us to materialism, the loop, the scarcity loop, the scarcity Mm -hmm. brain, this constant striving to do something that's totally not, I don't need to eat again. I just ate, and I sure don't need to eat 12 more donuts. I just had one. I mean, you know, I don't need to buy another gun, my wife said. I, but I did. I bought another one. And so, you know, but I mean, what is it about that? How does that work? Well, I like to say that everyone knows that everything is fine in moderation, yet why are we all so bad about it? <laughs> bad at it, right? And um, I do think that these tendencies we have when we overdo things, it's usually with things that would have given us a survival advantage in the past. So for all of time, pretty much everything you needed to survive was scarce and hard to find. Food. Food. Safety. Safety. Information. Uh, um, community. Community. Even status, the number of people mm-hmm. that you could influence. Um, possessions, right? Mm-hmm. Tools. Mm-hmm. So we sort of... Sounds like a video game. So, yeah. yeah. So we default to more of those. If you were the type of person that defaulted to more of those, you would survive. Now, the difference is that we sort of have that ancient drive for more in a world where we have an abundance of all those things. And we don't necessarily have a good governor that tells us, oh, you've had enough food. Or you own enough guns. (laughs) (laughs) Or you've got enough information on this event unfolding in the world and you don't need to spend all night up till 3 a.m. scrolling Twitter to get the death, next little... Death scrolling. Yes, yeah. death scrolling, exactly. Ugh. So why do we get stuck in this loop, do you think? Well, I think that one thing that's interesting is that um, technology has really pushed us into more. It knows what is going to work to get us to overconsume. Now, as part of this book, I went into a uh, casino in Las Vegas that is brand new. It's cutting edge, uh, but it's not open to the public. It is a casino laboratory that is used entirely for human behavior research. Now, if you think about something that people overdo over and over and over, it's a slot machine, Mm -hmm. right? And so they've really unpacked- Completely illogically. Completely illogically. But they do it anyway. Um, So I identify what I call the scarcity loop. And it is the sort of ultimate behavior loop at pushing us into more. And you can think of a slot machine. So it's got three parts. It's got opportunity, unpredictable rewards, and quick repeatability. You got an opportunity to get something of value that enhances your life, unpredictable rewards. You know you'll get that thing of value at some point if you keep repeating the behavior, but you don't know when, and you don't know how valuable it's going to be. So with the slot machine, it's like, if you keep playing, you'll eventually get a win, but you don't know how big it'll be, right? And then quick repeatability, you can repeat the behavior over and over. Now, the reason um, that this is important to know, because it 
It doesn't just apply to slot machines. It's in all these different technological systems and institutions that really kind of determine how we spend our time, our attention, our resources. So this loop is being put in social media. It's what makes social media work. The dopamine hit. Yeah, yeah. it makes uh, dating apps work. Mm. It drives a lot of online shopping behavior. Mm. It's in the rise of sports gambling. It's being put in certain finance, personal finance apps and on and on and on. And it's made really... the online porn industry the largest industry in the world. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so, in, you know, in the past, this wasn't a thing that was just part of our life at the, um, at the scope and scale that it is now. But because we spend so much of our lives on screens, now it's 12 to 13 hours a day engaged with digital media. It has this ability to sort of creep into our life and um, push us into behaviors that I think, um, although can be fun in the short term. They always, they're always fun. They're always fun in, in the, the short, short term, term. Uh, but can hurt us in the long run. So how do you flip that and go to from this false scarcity that puts you into a loop and go to an abundance mentality? Well, I think, first of all, if you have a behavior that you keep doing over and over and over and that is hurting you in the long run, um, to be aware that it probably does fall into the scarcity loop, uh, this leverages what researchers call the Hawthorne effect. So if you can observe a behavior, it usually changes the behavior just by knowing that, oh, this is happening, I'm doing this, like you'll start to change. And then second, you can change any of the three parts of the loop. So you can change the opportunity. Hmm. You can slow down the quick repeatability. So an example is if you're the type of person that is buying too much dumb stuff on the internet, even just having a rule that I'm only making my purchases in person, that inserts a pause because you have to get into your car, you have to drive down to the store, <laughs> and then hmm. you have to scour the aisles to find that item. And in that time, you probably realize I didn't even need this thing in the first place. I forgot what I was here for. Right. Yeah. I forgot what I was here for. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that you discover in this book that I found fascinating is there is a way to actually thrive with enough, which is in your subtitle. Mm -hmm. uh, you call it uh, a very unlikely hack that you discovered. What is that? Oh, the abundance the, loop? Is yeah, that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. So I think that... Um, so when you look at, okay, well, why do we, why is this scarcity loop so attractive to humans? It probably helped us uh, find food in the past. So if you think about the past, if you, uh, you needed food, right? And uh, that was going to allow you to survive. And so you go to one point, no food, the next point, no food, the next point, jackpot food. That's the exact same architecture as a slot machine. Um, you can use this loop in habits that enhance your life. So for example, um, you hunt. Mm -hmm. Hunting is the exact same system, right? Mm -hmm. You know you're, you're going out there to get an animal. There's your opportunity. You know you'll probably see an animal at some point, but you don't know how big. You don't know if it'll be the right one. You don't know if it'll be old enough. You don't know all these things. And when you find that, there's a gamble too. Like, am I going to be able to pull the trigger in the right spot, right? And then you can repeat that annually, whatever. But along the way, instead of a slot machine where you're sitting in a casino, you know, you're surrounded by smoke, you're indoors. When you're hunting, you're outside. That's good for us. You're also being physically active. That's good for us. You're probably hunting with other people. That's good for us. So you're getting all these ancillary benefits. And um, you see it in hunting. Uh, you could see this in, through fishing, mm -hmm. even things like uh, foraging. So foodies will forage for mushrooms. Mm -hmm. But even something as simple as like, you know what? I'm really into uh, collecting vinyl. And there's this album that is really hard to find. And I'm just going to walk around my city that I live in. And I'm going to go from vinyl store to vinyl store and see if I can find this thing. And that'll be an exciting way to spend my, my time. Uh -huh. Okay. Break the cycle. Michael Easter, the way we discovered him was through Comfort Crisis, the new book, Fix Your Craving Mindset, Rewire Your Habits to Thrive with Enough. It's called Scarcity Brain. Highly recommend it. I will be absorbing this this weekend. I have not gotten to it until now, and I will immediately. Good stuff. Absolutely great. Honored to have you on the show, my friend. Congratulations on these great works. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Check it out. Michael Easter, or EasterMichael.com. And you can follow him on social media, media at Michael Easter. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. 
And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 40% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. We have a stage. It's called the debt-free stage. If you stand on that stage, it can only mean one thing. Well, at least partially could only mean one thing. You're debt-free. Tommy and Heather are standing on that stage. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Where Thank do you guys you. Where do you guys live? Uh, right now, we live in Parrish, Florida, but we're originally from Torrington, Connecticut. Ah, fun. Well, welcome to Nashville. Good Thank to you. have you. How much debt have you guys paid off? It was uh, 112 and change. 112000 How yeah. long did this take? Uh, just over t uh, two years and three months. Okay. And um, what was your range of income during that time? It, would, uh, it started at 110 and ended at 150 Cool. What do you all do for a living? Um, so before we relocated to Florida, we uh, worked in a syringe factory mm -hmm. in Connecticut. And uh, with COVID, we had a lot of business, so there was unlimited overtime. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, we decided to go get our real estate license. Okay. And uh, yeah, our first year, we had 14 sales. Mm -hmm. So that took off. And um and moved to Florida to do that. <laughs> no, we no. sold houses in Connecticut, and oh. it was just this past July that we moved to Florida. Okay. You're doing real estate there? Not yet, but Not we're yet. going to be. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, way to go, guys. Okay. What kind of debt was the 112000 Oh, my God. What was it, the debt? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Credit cards. Um, Cars. Cars, solar, uh, solar panels. panels, my son's braces, cell phones, cell phones, iPads. iPads. You were normal. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. And, and normal in America sucks, doesn't it? It does. Yes, it Absolutely. does. Absolutely. So what woke you up two years and three months ago, and how did you get connected to all this Ramsey stuff? So, uh, truth be known, this whole thing started, like, right when we first met. I, uh, I have a history with addiction. And she walked into my life at a time frame when everybody else was walking away for that reason. Um, happy to say that October 7th, I celebrated 11 years of sobriety. Oh, congratulations. But unfortunately, when the uh, using stopped, the spending began. Mm, switched it out for a different one. Pretty much. Yeah. And um, yeah, so for, for years and years, it's basically what happened. I just... We would spend on everything and anything. She takes half the accountability for it, but 95% of it was me. Mm -hmm. I'll be the first one to tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, what are you? What were you addicted to before that you've been dry um, 11 years? Alcohol and uh, painkillers. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. That's a huge victory. You're a powerful guy to do that. That's uh, Not everybody can do what you've done, and uh, I'm very proud of you. All right, thanks. And now you've applied it. Start applying the whole concept to uh, the other parts of your life, huh? Yeah, so... Um, uh, as far as us being introduced to you, uh, I had a friend of mine, Joey Swartz, and his wife, Ruby, who've been telling me about you for a long time. And uh, right after we got our real estate license and all that stuff, he comes up to me and he says, Hey, Tommy, you need to get on this Dave Ramsey plant, or however he talks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I hope he doesn't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, he keeps telling me about it. And I thought it was just one of those get rich quick things. Yeah. So. Um, but Quite anyway, the opposite. <laughs> Just get rich slow. Yeah. So he uh, 
he was telling me about it and he stayed out of me about it. He's like, between real estate and all the overtime that you're working, he's like, you're going to be a millionaire in a few years. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Shut up. So um, it was 2021 our, after our first year in real estate. Um, we wound up getting, and Dave, you're going to kill me for this. Uh, <laughs> we got our generous Biden bucks, as mm-hmm. you call it. Mm-hmm. Now, you would think $5,600, I'd be smart and pay off two of my credit cards that are maxed out at 2500 each. Mm-hmm. No, nah, we're going to take the kids to Vegas. And that's what we did. Mm. And this is where the big moment happened. So when we get there, the limousine picks us up at the airport. I'm getting a Camaro the next day. We got a room with a volcano view. And we get to the hotel, and I don't have money to cover the incidentals. So my daughter, my 17-year-old daughter who was with us, and my son, she had to uh, pick it up so we can eat for the week. And our first three days that we were there, I I, I didn't even feel like I was there. I I was like beside myself. I'm like, you even realize what a freaking loser you just made yourself look like in front of your kids just now? And that was it. And it was the following Saturday. We were back home. We were getting ready to go to her sister's house. She was in the shower. And I'm scrolling through my YouTube feed. I'm like, yeah, I've seen this. Watch that. Don't care. Yada, yada. And then I come across this five things that'll make you wealthy video. And it says Dave Ramsey. I'm like, hey, this is the guy that Joey keeps telling me about. So I'm looking down at my, uh, I'm looking down at my phone. And I'm looking right at you. And I'm like... All right, hot shot. You got about 90 <laughs> seconds to sell me on this. Dave, you didn't even need 30 seconds. I'm like, I'm in. So, uh, yeah, we got to, Oh, and then there's the part that you said, uh, oh, yeah, you, the, um, what was it? Oh, yeah, you know what the Republicans and Democrats have in, uh, have in common? Neither one of them can freaking add up. I freaking texted Joey. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> that was the statement. That was it, yep. So how the- intense did it get quickly? I mean, from this moment to the moment you guys start this journey, how intense was it for you guys? Oh, uh, very intense. I mean, I've, I've always been like a workaholic, so it wasn't anything that I wasn't really used to, mm-hmm. but I mean, her and I, we would work like 12 hour shifts and then we'd go out and show houses. Yeah. You got the gazelles on the shirts. Wow. So you know about <laughs> it. Yep. Yeah. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? So as I said, um, I mean, I've been down this road twice mm-hmm. with using and with spending. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, the two key components, number one is accountability. Mm-hmm. You got to look in the mirror and like, David Goggins once says, you know, the accountability mirror, every day that you make an excuse is just another day. You don't have to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So accountability is big and perseverance, man. Just. And being on the same page. Exactly. If we weren't on the same page, it wouldn't have worked at all. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, you two. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Well done. Very well done. How's it feel to be free? (sighs) Oh. Heather, awesome. how's it feel to be, have, have him where he's saying, I'm not going to spend us into the poor house? <laughs> it's yep. a big deal. It is. It's a big deal. I mean, that's a big thing for your marriage. Big day for big day, thing for you to respect your husband when he does stuff like I mean, that's that's manly. That's well done. Both of you. I'm proud of you. Excellent, excellent Thank job you, working together, pulling this off and uh, push it, pushing it through. And uh, phenomenal. Hey, we've got the uh, Live and Give box for you. It's got the Baby Steps Millionaires book in it. That's your next stop. Uh, the Total Money Makeover book to give to somebody who's inspired by your story. Financial Peace University membership as well. You can enjoy these things or give them away. That's what they're for. A lot of people buy the box just to take some of it and use it and take some of it and give it. So we <laughs> want it to give it to you guys to say thanks for coming out. We appreciate you coming in from Florida to do your debt-free scream tommy and heather st petersburg florida one hundred and twelve thousand dollars paid off two years and three months making 110 to 150 count it down let's hear a debt free scream three two one we're We're debt debt free You know, the money thing is not as serious as the substance addiction Mm -hmm. thing, but the parallels in changing it Mm -hmm. are still there. Yeah. And the the, the parallels between what's underneath the problem. And, And it's so important for us to understand that when we want stuff, 
and we put it on a credit card because we can't wait for it. We, we, there's something deeper going on and understanding what's really going on. You said this so effectively for decades is that uh, I'm the problem in the mirror, the person I'm looking at, who I'm shaving, like I'm the problem. Something is, is going on with me in my heart and in my head that's making me live beyond what I can live under. And that's what's going on. And he recognized it twice and, and beat it twice. Incredible yeah. story. Looking for love in all the wrong places. There it is. Clicking yeah. prime, 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 yes. prime, prime. Yeah. Oh, wait, I still don't feel any better. Mm-hmm. Isn't that weird? Who knew? Yeah, that's how this works. This is The Ramsey Show. Guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of From Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host today. Allison is in San Diego. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hello. Hi. What's up? So I'm calling because I have about $16,000 in credit card debt, uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit over $16,000, and 17,000 in student loans, so a total of like $33,700 in debt, total debt. Um, and the problem is that my credit cards, the balances on those, I've had them for years, um, and the interest is really high. On some of them, it's like 30%, on some of them, it's like 24 and the balances just don't go down. So what I'm wondering is whether I should... Um, maybe ask for like a loan, for, um, like a, maybe a personal loan from one of my family members to tackle one and then start um, slowly tackling the other ones. I just got a new job and doubled my income. Oh, that's great. What do you make? And, um, I'm going to start making about $6,000 per month. I'm going to say more. Uh, and, you, and you were making about 3000 I was making about three thousand, yes. Okay, and so if you keep living living like you were living on three thousand, and you put three thousand a month towards the debt, you'd be out of debt in a year. True. Um, I mean, I do have my the, the only issue now is that I do have a commute, and the gas is really expensive. It's about an hour and a half commute every day. Um, Sounds like you need to move. So- 200. I that is the plan. Yeah. In about a year. My daughter's in high school. Why would you wait school. a year? Why would you drive an hour and a half for a year? Because my I share custody with my daughter's dad in um the hometown the town that I live in and um that's it's you know it's a legal thing that I have to go through or we have to figure something out. Mm-hmm. But for now my daughter's you know she's for three hours a day, I'm going to figure something out. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I have figured something out to where one one Al- week a week that she's with her dad. Allison, yes. borrowing money will not get you out of debt. You can't borrow your way out of debt. Interest rates are not your problem. Finding a way to not pay 
$3,000 a month on this debt for 11 months is your problem. You need to find a way to pay $3,000 a month instead of finding a way to not pay $3,000 a month. That's what you've done so far. Uh, you've now yeah. got this fabulous moment in time where your income has shot way up. Let's find reasons mm -hmm. and ways to make to take advantage of that and get this mess cleaned up. You can't borrow your way out of debt. This is not an interest rate problem. This is an Allison problem. It is, yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're, you're a smart lady, and you know all this. So, Because uh, I tried to do this for years. I tried to borrow my way out of debt. I tried to out-earn my stupidity. I tried to do all this. But finally, one day, I just said, that's it. There's only one way to pay, get out of debt. It's pay it off. I got to pay it off. That's how I get out of debt. I got. I got. I need thirty-three thousand dollars. That's three thousand a month for eleven months. Oh, there's some interest, so it's going to take me twelve. Okay, but it's still going to get. Yeah. Oh, whatever. And I got some gas. My gas bill's higher, and I'm commuting. Oh, well, maybe I'm not, or maybe I am a couple days a week, or maybe I don't know. Is there another way to do this? I got to find a way. I got to find a way to put three thousand dollars a month on this. I got three thousand dollars a month. I didn't have before I got this new job. I got to. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Well, there's an old phrase, where there's a will, there's a way. And, and it's really true. It's not just a, a nice little saying on a quilted, you know, thing in a country store. I mean, it's it's really that we begin to see opportunities when we do what you just said, Dave. When we actually say, I have to find a way. So I keep looking, 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 looking. And things that solutions, opportunities that weren't seen before are all of a sudden seen. And it is just that simple. Seek and you will find. I mean, th that is the goal right here for her. The way I changed my mindset was I always, you know, pr take it, pretend like there's some kind of whacked out tragedy, mm -hmm. which is not really happening. But go with me for a minute. Those of you that have children that you like. OK, <laughs> let's pretend one of them was ill and you needed thirty three thousand dollars to save their life. Yeah. Watch out. And you had to do it in two years. Mm -hmm. And you, you you would not find reasons to not do it. You would find reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. It, hell hath no fury like someone trying to save the life of their child. That's really and, good. And what that means is, is that you can do this. It just has to become a priority. In that case, in that bizarre, tragic situation, which doesn't really exist, mm -hmm. but if it did exist, you would find a way. There, you'd find a will where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to figure this out. We're not losing this kid. We're going to go, you know. That's right. You can't, if you've ever seen somebody that didn't like the diagnosis they got, they go to about 16 doctors so they get a diagnosis they like that's or correct. a treatment plan that's going to work instead of everybody going, oop, you're going to die, oop, you're going to die, oop, you're going to die. And they find some kind of alternative something or other weird thing and, I don't know, some witch doctor claps their hands twice and spins around or whatever, but they find a way, right? That's correct. A and, you know, because I'm not going to – I don't accept this. A and when you reach that point that you go, I've had it, Yeah, that's where it changes, Allison. Yeah. And that's what I need you to do here. Um, in, instead of using this new job as a just some extra margin in life, it needs to clean up your mess. Yeah. And you need to cut up those stupid credit cards. Get you some scissors out tonight. Light a candle. Have a plastic surgery party. Mm -hmm. Maria is in New York. Hi, Maria. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me okay? Yes. What's up? Okay. So I started listening to you guys about a month ago, and I'm on baby step four. Mm -hmm. um, so I currently consider um, try to contribute ten percent to my employer's Roth four hundred one k, which is the max to get the match. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to increase that. And my question is: Should I contribute more to that Roth four hundred one k? Should I contribute to a separate IRA account? Uh, are the options inside your four hundred one k good options? They're pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's not exciting. Yeah, you know, they are. And, I mean, and, if they've um, got good long-term track records, yes, just increase your not above your match and get to 15%. Uh, if not, then you can go open an individual Roth IRA with a Ramsey SmartVestor Pro. Click SmartVestor at RamseySolutions.com. Find the people we recommend for investing, and they can help you set up a, a personal Roth IRA. 
uh, and pick help you pick out some good mutual funds that you feel good about. You'll learn about stuff in the process of doing that, which is kind of cool. I'd probably do that just for that reason. But you're, you're on to something here. What we tell people is it's kind of rock, paper, scissors, except there's only one way to win. It's um, match beats Roth beats traditional. In your case, you've got a match up to 10, and you're going to take that, and you've got it in a Roth, which is a double dip. That's awesome. And you can do Roth beyond that to get to 15%, either in an individual or at your company. If you're not excited about the options at your company, then go get an individual Roth for the balance of that other 5% of your income going in. Uh, but if, you're, if, it, if your uh, options are decent and you want to just stay with one simple plan, you just increase what you're doing at work, and then you don't have to think about it again. Yeah, and I, I think the key here is is what's my long-term goal and understanding what we teach. She's new to the show. And so I just want to point out that uh, you, you've taught all the Ramsey personalities as we've learned, so try to learn what you know. If we look at the long-term effects of the stock market and the investment, that plan there, that little rock, paper, scissors, I love that. It works, and it works all the time, but you have time. to stay with it. And so she's brand new, and, and I, I, I'm just getting her back to you to tell her, once you get on this plan, stay in it. That yep. is the key. Don't get off when we hear these, you know, the your your analogy that's so powerful is the roller coaster. Yeah. Well, you would if you were not invested in the last twelve months, you would have missed out on a fifteen plus fifteen plus percent rate of return. Yeah. Wow. In, in good mutual funds. That's the last twelve months. Nobody's talking about that. Everybody's talking about what mortgage interest rates are. Right. The dead gum stock market's skyrocketing, and you're not you're not even on the ride. Come on. <laughs> That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book From Paycheck to Purpose, talking about careers and jobs. He's my sidekick today, my co-host. Open phones here, 888-825-5225. Danielle is in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Uh, kind of stressed out, trying to wrap my mind around a couple of things. <laughs> Ouch, that doesn't sound fun. What's going on, kiddo? Well, I would say 2022, there was a death in the family, and that's kind of where it started. And then um, my fiancé uh, was, I guess, was let go from his job because he was having a hard time with the loss, so we all were. And then... We decided to start our business. And so business is going fine. And then I got laid off from my full time job, which was which was kind of surprising. So now we're at a point where it's like, all right, neither one of us have like the full time job, but we've just been working our businesses and they've uh had some pop up problems here and there and so it's definitely causing a lot of issues. Who passed away? I mean, no. It was uh, my fiance's brother's wife. Okay. Well, that's certainly a tragedy. So, a tragedy is certainly a hard thing to get past. And that was uh, three years ago. That was, no, nope, just last year. Oh, uh, last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, your fiancé, when are you all getting married? How long has he been your fiancé? 
it was supposed to be this July, but I actually got laid off then. So I was like, well. They don't let laid off people get married? I mean, I didn't feel like that would make sense to. Uh, oh, it made sense to start a business. Well, we had already had the plans and did everything to start. The yeah, business. you kind of already had a plan had to get married. Anyway, okay. So how much does your fiancé make at his job or his business? Well, uh, well, it's our business. It was, a, it was a churro business. And also he has another property where he's a landlord and has tenants. That's not a job. So it well, you have one property and business. tenants. That doesn't take 10 minutes. That's not a job. And okay, so well, how much does he make? Well, he did have a job. And no, honey. He, he started a business. How much money does he make? Um, Nothing. That's what he makes. Oh, okay. Right? You wouldn't be calling right. me if he was making 100 a degree year. And so I guess just... Um, Wait, stop. You just drove past. Stop. Let's stop right where we were. Your fiance mm -hmm. is not making any money. Am I correct? Yes or no? From right now, uh, darling. Right now, you got no money because you got laid off, and his business is not a business; it's a hobby. He does not make any money. Am I wrong? No. Okay. Yeah, probably right. not much. <laughs> okay. So he needs to get a job, and you need to get a job. And all of a yeah. sudden, y'all will have income. Mm -hmm. And quit calling this sitting on my butt a business. Mm -hmm. Danielle, you guys are in Tampa, Florida. You, you guys need to be working multiple jobs if you can't get a right. really good uh, job in the industry that you are in. We need to be bringing in income. This is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question on my screen says, how can I handle my finances after losing my job? And the answer is, get six jobs. Mm -hmm. Right. No, we do have, um, we do uh, a Turo, we do... That's where you're um, renting your car out economy. to people? That's like, you're, you're just using your car as a rental car, yes? Well, we have actual two cars on the platform that aren't either one of our cars. Right, my, but my point so is you're in a rental car business and it's, you're, there's not enough margin in that. So, you're not making any money. Yeah, that's not that's not a company. You're oh. using an app to, to rent your cars. Right, well. That's a great side hustle if you've got it and the cars uh, are paid it's, for. It, it, but it it's not supposed it's, to be a side hustle. <laughs> right, but we don't need side hustles right now. We need seven side hustles, mm -hmm. or six, as Dave said, or, or full-time Or a full-time job. Mm -hmm. What were you making at your last job? Yeah, I would say about four, four uh, grand a month. Okay. What were you doing? I was doing, uh, I was a quality engineering technician. Mm-hmm. And why did they fire you? No, it was a layoff. The whole, the whole shift got laid off, so okay. there was only one shift. Okay. All right. So you need to replace that income with a good core career and quit messing around the side with, I'm a landlord and I rent out my cars and calling that a way to make a living because you're not making a living. You wouldn't have called me if you and your fiancé were making serious bank. So your, in, your problem is not a outgo, I'm struggling with debt, my finances are out of control issue. Your problem is you don't have any income. Mm -hmm. And the great news is there's a tremendous labor shortage in America right now. Yeah, And lots of people hiring. And we're going into Christmas season. Yeah, and listen, Dave, if there are some debt on those cars, which many times people are carrying car payments on these cars and then renting them just like they would do a house, I would sell the cars. Move if the, if you have some equity in those cars, move the cars, get out of the Toro business, get rid of the debt. If you own them free and clear, Danielle, 
sell them anyway and get yourself some some a little bit of a cushion get an emergency fund get employed pay off any debt work the baby steps you've got to get out of this Turo business I just it long term it's just not a good play because you've got an asset of a car it's not an asset it just continues to go down in value and you hope that you can rent it out enough to people who fly into Tampa and don't want to rent from any other rental car agency it just is fraught with all kinds of problems your fiance may need to sit down with a good counselor mm. and help him unpack because he might be depressed. Mm. He might be struggling with the grief at a unbelievable level that's affecting his whole life now. And he may need to sit down with somebody and unpack that because what I hear in your all's whole story is we want to figure out a way to have money without working. That's your whole story that you told me on the phone. And, and now that I got laid off, it kind of, uh oh, this doesn't work. So you guys have got to go back to work. You got to get your career, start bringing home the bacon. And sometimes that may be because of the death that you guys have been through and the grieving around that. That's fair. But in the meantime, you got to get your life back, kiddo. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Paul is in Portland, Oregon. Hey, Paul, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's so, up? Uh, my my wife and I we have a we own a house. Uh, we refinanced a couple of years ago when interest rates were good and got locked in at around three percent. And now uh, she and I disagree a little bit on how we should use some of our investment money. I think we should put the um, uh, put it towards uh, 401k and IRA and other retirement investments, mm -hmm. whereas she would like to pay down the mortgage sooner. Mm -hmm. um, my philosophy is the uh, 401k and IRA uh, should give a better than a 3% return, so it's a little bit of a better investment in the long run. But I wanted to hear your opinion. Okay. Well, we teach people to do both. And the process that we use has led millions of people into a situation where they're wealthy. Uh, and, and the process that we call the baby steps. And the first goal is to become debt-free other than your home. That's baby steps one and two. two. Then three is have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. I assume you've done those things before you ask this question. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. You don't have any debt and you have an emergency fund except your house, right? Correct. Okay. And then that brings us to baby steps four, five, and six, which we do simultaneously. Baby step four is put 15% of your income into retirement. First to the match, if there is a match at work. Uh, second to Roth. And third to traditional, if it takes that to get up to 15%. 
Maybe step five while you're doing that is you start doing something towards kids' college if that's appropriate. And then six is all other monies that we're not spending on life above 15% going into investments, pay down the home. Because you want to have both a paid for home and a large nest egg in the 401k. The millionaires that we have studied, those are the two primary things that they did to become millionaires. And we did the largest study of millionaires ever done in North America a couple of years ago, and that was our findings. So all that to say is you're both right, um, but at, at around those numbers and that structure. So what's your household income? Uh, it's... My income's 110, and hers is variable. It's uh, she's a substitute teacher, so it's a few hundred a month. Okay, so so you make like 130 thousand a year, roughly. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen. How old are you? Uh, 31. Okay. Fifteen percent of that. If you never do anything else, in good mutual funds, in your 401k, in a Roth, with a match, particularly on portion of it will make you extremely wealthy by the time you're 65 years old, like $10 million is what the math will come out. Yeah. Okay. Currently, I'm putting a 20% with a 4% match. Yeah. All then what I'm telling you to do is I would back it down to 15 and I'd throw the rest at the mortgage. Okay. And I'd get that house paid off because it's one of the two elements for the first $1 to $5 million of net worth that people come up with. And you get that house paid off, then you don't have any payments. Now you're freeing up your most powerful wealth building tool, which is your income. Meanwhile, you've been getting a match. Meanwhile, you're putting, you know, what, 17,000 bucks a year, 18,000 bucks, 1,500 bucks a month, give or take, is 15% of your all's income. You're going to be unbelievably rich if you never do anything else. But certainly we'll have the house paid for in a few years, and then we'll be able to put even more towards everything. And the whole stinking thing mathematically just blows up in a wonderful way. But uh, so you're both right in that sense. But would I ever uh, never pay extra on the house and keep the home mortgage? No, because we found that the typical millionaire doesn't do that. The number of millionaires that we talked to that said, you know, the way I got rich was I didn't ever pay off my house. I put it all into investments. Almost none. Almost none. They did both. They invested and they got their house paid off. That's the thing we see. That's the two big things. We see other stuff around the edges of it. But that, if you want to plow right through the middle of what these people do, that's it. They get the house paid off, and they invest steadily, not one or the other. Yeah, and, and by the way, at 31 years of age, I love that we're hearing this question because this is exactly what we look at when we talk to every uh, million, excuse me, uh, Baby Steps millionaires in our theme hours. And we were on last week together, and just one after another, one after another, they play the long game that we teach. And yeah. this 31-year-old is going to be there. Well, he, you know, we didn't ask about the house value and the balance on it, right. but we're more dealing with the concept. But mathematically, he'll be there in about a decade. Yeah. 41. For his first million. Yeah. Yeah. And and then we go from there. So, yeah, that, that's a pretty cool place to be. Yeah. Andrew's in Orlando. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? Uh, so I recently got a promotion at my current job. I work in the hospitality field. Um, I'm making $18 an hour now. Um, and the company I work for is about to see a lot of large growth and, uh, from now until 2025. Um but I'm interested in possibly going back to school. Um, I do already have two degrees. Um, both are in music performance. I use them for my side hustle where I'm teaching um, marching bands on the side and writing music. But I'm interested in possibly going back to school to get something in the data analytics side of things and to transfer departments in my company into the data analytics side. And I'm just kind of looking for advice as to if I should go back to school or not. Probably not, but I want you to understand why I'm saying that. You don't have to get a four-year degree to get hired into data analytics. There are so many boot camps and certification programs where you can spend a whole lot less money and a lot less time. And that's great for you because you're now a professional and you're in with this company. And I would also tell you that if you find a reputable uh, opportunity and take it to your company leaders and say, hey, I love this company. I'm in the hospitality game right now, but I want to move over into the technology side of this company. I want to be with you guys long term. Uh, would you be willing to reimburse or pay for my tuition? And because 
you are so valuable to them now and you're going to be adding technology skills, you could very well get this paid for by your company. But even if you didn't, it's a whole lot less money to go get that uh, through a boot camp or through uh, legit programs like Bethel Tech, which we endorse here. Uh, than going back to four years of school. You've already done your time with two-year degree, uh, two degrees. You don't need a full four-year degree in technology to do that work. Yeah, and so that makes complete sense, um, which I'm glad to hear. Uh, with that, um, the company does pay for schooling, but they won't pay for boot camps. I know you said just kind of approach them um, – uh, I would guess I would have to figure out who to approach within the company. Um, is if they don't, if they would not reimburse it, is that something? Um, I know you guys. I I have about six thousand dollars of debt right now in credit cards. I know dumb decision would be to go into more debt for more school. Of course. School. Well, first of all, let's, so, so what I would tell you to do is pay off your debt. Uh, the the technology qualifications and certifications that's all going to be waiting for you. Uh, you're fine. You're young. You're on your way. You're in with the company you want to be with. This gives you a chance now to show them uh, the value that you have and go ahead and pay off the debt. Pay off the debt and then save up the money or cash flow your way through your budget each month and and go get the the, the work done. Because let me tell you something. Even if they won't pay for it, uh, you'll get all that money back and then some. Yeah, I, but I I think. Um... I'm going to spend a little time with the folks over in the data side yeah. and say, I'd really like to be over here. I'm about one certification or boot camp away from being valuable to you. If you guys will help me with that, we're going to be game on. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, – I don't pay for boot camps at Ramsey. I do pay for education at Ramsey. But if you come into our – one of our leaders' office with a reason to do something yeah. that's going to give you – make you more valuable while you're here, right. we will pay for the tool. Right. You know, I mean, we do it all the time. And we may be getting hung up, too, on boot camp. I'm using that, generally speaking. Maybe just a certification program. Just a legitimate program. There are legitimate programs that aren't technical boot camps. You need to do your research on that. Do exactly what Dave said. But take them options and go, this program, this program, and this program cost this much, take this amount of time, and I want to do it to be on your team. Would you be willing to help me? And I think you're going to be surprised at what you might hear. Yeah, I wouldn't take my first note or a policy decision on that. I'd be knocking on the door till somebody answered. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Abby's with us. Hi, Abby. How are you? Hi. Better than I deserve. How are you? Better than I deserve. Welcome. Where do you live? Frederick, Maryland. Oh, fun. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for hanging out. How much debt have you paid off? $67,912. Good for you. And how long did that take? Six years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 44000 to 68000 Okay. And what kind of debt was the 68000 Student loans and a car. Ah, okay. Cool. How old are you? 
27, I turned 28 in December. Okay, so this journey starts when you're 21. Yes. Tell us about it, and how'd you get connected to us? Yeah, so back uh, in 2011, when I was in high school, my parents took FPU, and I remember in my bedroom having envelopes on the back of my door where I had to put cash that I would get for allowance and things like that into different categories. Hardcore. Exactly, I know. They're so tough, aren't they? Um, But it, it... invested that principle into me in the beginning. And then I went to college. And then after college, I graduated in 2017. Mm -hmm. And my parents had been starting to take it more seriously. And I was unsure exactly of where all my money was going. I knew generally how much I should have or how much I was spending, but I didn't really know for sure. And I was living at home for a few years to help pay off my debt. Um, And so that's where it really started. I wanted to get rid of it right away and not wait till I was in my 40s and 50s to pay all this stuff off when I was single and um, living at home to try to pay off as much as I could. So I got started then and really took it seriously. I took financial peace in 2020. Um, We had to go virtual in March, right when COVID started. Yeah. yeah. So I took that in 2020. And then I've just been getting after it uh, ever since. So that's kind of how I got started. So a lot of this has been the last three years. Yeah, yeah. A big bulk of it has. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So you go from high school student where your nerdy dad made you have envelopes on the back of the yes. door. I love nerdy dad. There you go. <laughs> And I'll, I'll, but then still go get a car loan and a student loan. Yeah, they how's were, that happen? They were they said we were just talking about it before I came on. They were like, yeah, we weren't really taking it seriously until about 2017, oh, 2016. Oh, so, okay. Yep, so yep. they were a little except for the envelope part, they were a little ish. I know exactly. And then that infected you. Yes. Ah, yes. okay. Well, I'll give you a pass then. <laughs> okay, that's cool. It all worked out. All right, and, and but the end of the story is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Very absolutely. Good. Very cool. So I love that this is a six-year journey for someone your age. You stayed with it. You didn't get distracted. You know, you stayed with it. What's the key? If you were talking to other people your age and they're going, all right, I'm graduating with some student loan debt or maybe they got the car, whatever it is. We have a lot of young people joining Mm -hmm. the show all the time. What would you say to them is the key to maybe your generation sticking with this plan? What would you say to them? Yeah, I have two things that come to mind. First of all, my faith is so big to me, and this journey taught me more about God's faithfulness and provision than probably anything else in my life. So realizing Mm. that it's not my money, God actually trusts me with this money, and I'm to steward it well. And so if I'm being reckless, that's not being a good steward. So being able to recognize that made it easier for me to be sacrificial and let go of things because it's not mine at the end of the day. Um, But secondly, budgeting is just so important. Like I said, I knew previously, like vaguely how much money I was spending, but once my dad and I put together a little Excel spreadsheet and worked it all out and he got all the formulas for me and everything, um, that budget really, really helps me. And I look forward to it every month. And I tell all my friends, I'm doing my budget this weekend and having to ask my roommates to pay me back money for things so that my budget can be equaled out, you know, it's it's um, it's challenging, but it really pays off in the end. And being able to say no to things like during COVID, all of my stimulus checks, fourteen hundred dollars going to Advantage hurt, <laughs> but wow. was different than all my other mm-hmm. was that sure. all that my friends were doing with their stimulus checks and things like that. So I paid during the whole pandemic. Um, so just that self denial of things that you might want right here and now, and looking forward to the future. So. Mm. How's it feel to be free? It feels great. It feels so great with all the student loan stuff coming back and not having a care in the world. I'm like, yeah. not me. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not signed up for your loser plan. Yes, yeah. exactly. I love it. Way I'm to go. trying to tell my friends. I'm like, get on this. You can. I was just texting someone last night. She's making like so much money. I'm like, you could be debt free in a year. Just do it. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, but just stick with it and you got it. So I'm trying yeah. to inspire all my friends to get on the train. How are they reacting to the fact that their payments are now due? They're stressed. People are very stressed. I think especially if you weren't paying during the big pause, Mm -hmm. it feels like this big boulder coming at you. So they're they're really overwhelmed. And I actually think it's a good um, thing for right now because my dad and I are actually teaching FPU at my church this spring. And I lead a young adults ministry. And so I'm trying to get all of my Mm -hmm. friends to come. And I'm like, guys, you can get in control of this. And once you're in control and you know what's going on, your anxiety is going to ease so Mm -hmm. much. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? 
Um, that that's sacrifice, being able to deny yourself, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's going to be okay. You don't need everything, <laughs> um, which is a hard concept to learn. Um, but it teaches you that you know that self-sacrifice, and again, goes back to my faith that Jesus died for me and denied Himself, and so I can deny myself, you know, a new pair of shoes or wanting to go on a trip or something like that for a longer goal that's going to be able to let me bless other people Amen. in the long run. So yeah, well said. Mm. Very well said. Well, congratulations. Other than mom and dad, who was cheering you on? Um, My brother and sister, Brooks and Emily, Mm -hmm. and then my brother-in-law, Scott. Scott watches you all the time. He and I were going back on the phone last night talking about what's he going to say, and he has all your impersonations (laughs) down pat. So, um, Oh, (laughs) my impersonation. Yeah. Yeah, he does a good job. He he really nails it. But So, yeah, my family and then um, my roommates, they all know, and all my friends, really all my friends cheer me on. I don't really have too many people telling me that I'm crazy or anything like that. So, that's good. Yeah. That's good. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons you win. You got to be careful who you have around you. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yep. That. You yep. become who you hang around with. Right. So. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. We're proud of you, Hero. Thank you. Very good job. Hey, we've got the Live and Give box for you. That's the Baby Steps Millionaire's book, which is your next stop. Amen. For sure. The Total Money Makeover book and the Financial Peace University membership and all of that will work to help you in the ministry that you're doing and for you to enjoy as well. Thank you. Thanks for making the trip from Maryland. You're a fireball. You're fun. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Very well done. Good job on the air. And man, what a great story. At uh, uh, 28 years old, right? 27 right now. I wanted to be debt free before I turned 28. So yeah. 27 years old. Exactly. 68,000 paid off in six years, making 40 to 68. Abby from Maryland, count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! Yeah! Now, what is fascinating about her story, if you listen carefully to it, and this happens with a lot of debt-free scream people that are in here on the stage, we hear this often. Uh, she had a six-year journey, but the majority of it was done in three. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what was the difference? Was it the income? No. Nope. It was her outlook. When she decided, mm-hmm. I can sacrifice a pair of shoes. I can sacrifice this to get control of my life. I can sacrifice. I can sacrifice. I can do. Di- I can do. Needs and wants are different things. Yeah. I can get control of this. And once she decided that, and then the income came with it too. Mm-hmm. Man, the last three years, it's like yeah, boom. Well, there's something powerful too. We know this from tons of psychology studies to put a date on something. Mm-hmm. There's something about, about 28 years old. Yeah. And that yeah. really motivated her. You could tell that she, she was like, I, Oh, I'm not 28 yet, Dave. Cause I said I was going to be debt free and by golly, she did it. Mm-hmm. And there's something powerful about putting, and again, life happens. So I don't want anybody thinking, well, it has to be by that date, but it certainly helps. There's something about seeing the finish line. We know this about runners. I only ran one race, Dave. I retired, you know, because you guilted me into one race. But I learned one thing. Having a mark that you're trying to hit does drive you towards it. You, you want me to get out the world's smallest violin now? <laughs> Where I guilted you he did. into doing he something me incredible. Out. But it was actually great for me. So I learned who a came lot. alongside you in you the last did. mile when you yeah. were struggling to finish? I looked like finish. a wounded wildebeest in those nature shows. And Dave came alongside as I was cramping up and walk, got me through. But setting a time, setting a goal. I'm not sure his feet touched the ground the last mile. I think we carried you. I did. Oh, no. I actually <laughs> ran, but it was it was all guts. And there was no glory, by the way, ever. <laughs> None. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is hallow. 
Hello is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic, you can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. The Ramsey Show question of the day is sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Take your home's efficiency and style to the next level with convenient solutions from Shelf Genie, Window Genie, and Glass Doctor. Download the Neighborly app now to find and schedule home service professionals near you. Today's question comes from Jeffrey in Connecticut. What are some good careers to transition from being a teacher? I'm in my third year teaching, and I would quit tomorrow if I could. I absolutely adore my students, but the district I work for is making life unbearable. I thought about transitioning in a few years, but at this point, I'm at my breaking point. Well, first, let me let me say sorry, Jeffrey. I, I hear from teachers uh, on my show, the Ken Coleman Show, all the time. I see it on social media. The environment in which our public school teachers are having to teach is absolutely uh, awful in many cases, and it is making good men and women like you want to leave a very honorable profession. So to ideate here, what we want to do is is we want to realize that the reason you want to leave is because you're doing this right thing, this thing you love, in the wrong place. So if you can't stay in actual teaching, maybe in a private school environment or maybe in a college environment that might be slightly more uh, advantageous to you as far as students wanting to be there, then I would be looking at what you do as a teacher, what you're good at. That's the instructing, the planning, the communicating, the encouraging. And and then write down what you love most about those roles. And what you're going to do is, in this little exercise, is create a job description that's written down and you can see it. And now when you're out there looking for roles, you can begin to match up what you love about teaching, what you're good at in teaching. And you begin to see that you could go into corporate training. You could go into HR work. Uh, you could go into management and leadership. There really is no limit if you understand what you're good at as a teacher and what you enjoy doing as a teacher. And that becomes the job description. And I can tell you this, the private sector uh, is very welcoming to former teachers because you bring such a great mix of talent and experience to the table and you care about people. That's what teaching is about, instructing, influencing so that someone can transform and grow. And so that's what I would be looking for. And if you take the education lens off and just look at what you do, I think you're going to find a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And I would add, uh, while you're working towards finding what your work life looks like, your volunteer life could be Mm. with the youth group at the church and teaching a Sunday school class to teenagers, teaching lessons at summer camp to teenagers. Um, And and that might not necessarily be how you earn your living, but it might be an outlet for your gift Mm -hmm. as well. Um, In my 20s, I hung out with teenagers all the time. Yeah. Um, As a matter of fact, I went to the funeral of one of my friends this weekend that was one of the youth leaders Mm. um, back then. And a lot of the kids that were there that are now of wow. course not kids uh they're they're have children of their own now and that kind of thing they're older than my kids because they were in those days and but seeing that whole group of teens that were that we taught back then and the impact that it's had on their lives hopefully positively but yeah that's uh there, there's a lot of ways to uh, use your giftings in this but teaching is um for some reason 
we have declared that teaching is only occurs in the classroom. Mm-hmm. And teaching occurs a lot of different places. Um, I'm positive that one of my spiritual gifts is teaching. I'm a teacher. I teach you guys every day here. I teach you with books. I teach you in curriculum. I teach you uh, on this show. Um, but convincing you of a new idea, teaching you something you didn't know before. And so that I, that's all I am, is a, just another a glorified teacher. And so uh, it's one of the reasons I get so fired up is if somebody's not learning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, you got a lot of opportunity out there, Jeffrey, a lot of things you can go to where you don't have to pull up, put up with the uh, garbage being shoveled by your district. Mm-hmm. Jane is in Canada. Hi, Jane. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. I'm so thrilled to be on your show. Thank you for having me. How are you guys? Better than I deserve. How can we help? <laughs> Okay, I have a rather complicated um, slash sad, but uh, trying to make the both most of my situation um, situation going on. So my husband passed away in August. Oh no! What happened? Um, <clears throat> oh, that's a complication. He died of alcoholism. Oh. He died of cirrhosis. I'm sorry. Um, so thank you. He he was a breadwinner. He at one point made a lot of money, and we had a beautiful renovated house in Toronto, which we, which I have sold because I couldn't afford to keep it. Mm. Um, so I am left with a chunk of money. Um, I've got two small kids, seven and 12. So I'm a single parent. I'm a classical pianist. Um, so obviously I don't make a ton of money, but you know, I'm okay. But so I've got about $1.5 million. And my question is, do I put, I live in Toronto, downtown, where I would really like to stay, and I, I know that, you know, I don't have to stay here, but my kids, I'm trying to minimize their disruption, and also my work is downtown. So for me to buy a house would be about 1.3, and I could do it in cash, but I also know that you're not a fan of my, pretty much all of my net worth being in a house. So do you well, think I'm not, that I'm, I should... I'm, I'm a fan of you not having a house payment right now, and Toronto's an excellent <laughs> real estate market, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm probably going to try to change my budget on this house from, you know, 1.3 to 1 or something like that. Let's try mm-hmm. to free up a little bit more of this money and uh, downsize. The kids, the disruption to the kids is going to be a lot more severe if their mom is stressed out because she gets herself in a financial pinch than based mm-hmm. on where they live. So I'm a mm-hmm. lot more concerned with you building a sustainable life mathematically than I am where you live as far as the okay. children's disruption goes. They don't mm-hmm. know. They, they don't know. All they're going to know is what you tell them. And believe me, you're going to tell them a lot without telling them a thing if you get financially stressed. So um, let, let's get down on that budget and free up some more of that money. And then also... Can your career sustain you guys at that point? Well, here's the complication is, so I'm renting right now, and I know that I've been watching you guys religiously for the last sort of six months, that you're in support of me renting short term mm-hmm. um, in a time of stress and transition, but not in long term. Right. But I don't have my piano with me. Where I'm making money is I'm at two different conservatories downtown Toronto. Mm-hmm. So I could make more money having my piano, mm-hmm. which is in storage because I moved from a rather large house to a two bedroom apartment mm-hmm. just to get my bearings. Yeah, that's fine. And um, so when you get a house, you get a piano and then you can make money giving lessons, I'm guessing, or what? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. Giving lessons and doing it and online. You, you, I, so I was just my guess is, better to take Yeah, my guess sorry, is with ahead. an online lesson program and some in-house uh, lessons that you might make more doing that than you are um, playing in the local orchestra. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, I mean, I have good potential to make quite a good living. Yeah. Okay. But I need well, let's set, that, let's set up that small business idea as a part of this home purchase. But still, it does not have to be, there's no requirement that it's 1.3. That's just where you've landed so far. So the further down you land on that price, the better this idea is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the more you're not going to like it. <laughs> but that's still the direction I would go. I'd try to get down as cheap as I can on the house and still meet these different needs, the location, 
the uh, size for the piano. That makes a lot of sense. I think she can do really well with that. I think so, too. And, and, and because of her cred, you know, she, she's not just someone who has a degree. She knows people, too. Mm-hmm. And so I would really encourage you, Jane, to maximize the relationships that you have because of what you currently do. And they begin to spread the word for you. It's really, really credible. I think you have more business than you'll know what to do with. And I think I would be charging premium, taking your time as you as you move into this new season of life. But we're really excited for you uh, because this is a great opportunity for you to reset and rebuild. Yep. Good stuff. If we can help further, you call us anytime. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thanks for calling in. Ken Coleman, that puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book, Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host today as we talk about your career, your job, your life, your money. It's all right here. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Anna or Anna is with us in Los Angeles. Hi, how are you? Hello, um, how are you? I'm Uh, doing great. (laughs) Good. How can we help? Um, So I've been working for some time now, and um, I I thought I I did an okay job for building up my personal wealth, but um, I also like um, to hear uh, your opinion about how I'm doing this far. Okay. How are you doing? Tell Um, me about it. (laughs) Yeah. So um, I've been in the real estate business um, for many years. Mm -hmm. Um, Personally, I have four rental properties Mm -hmm. and the yearly income is about 50,000 given or more or less. Mm -hmm. Um, The total mortgage balance I have about is a, a million. Um, and one thing, um, I don't know what, what I was thinking, but I did take out a home equity line, um, for the purpose of, uh, purchasing other properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so far I've been paying it off the highest. It was close to 600,000, mm-hmm. but based on my calculation, that's back in 2019 and I should be able to pay that off completely off, um, by next year, mm-hmm. um, middle of next year, and then you'll still have um, and then you'll still have a million dollars out on the rentals. Correct. Yes. Okay, and you make what a year? Uh, uh, that's the wild card. So I mean, real estate. So mm-hmm. that's I mean, what did you make last it's hard year? Hard to say. Last year is about two hundred. Okay. All right. That's a, probably your average year, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good for you. And so, so what's your plan? Just stay in debt the rest of your life? I mean, what's your plan? So, sounds like um, it, because it sounds like you keep buying rentals with more debt. Yeah, and, and that's my question. Although I have these rental properties, but I, I, I always feel I have this piece of rock um, in, inside of me. It's, I feel yep. very, very heavy. Yep. So, well, it's a million-dollar rock. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there <laughs> in your right. stomach, yeah. 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 So should I get rid of some of the properties? So to get rid of this feeling, um, I'm not sure what to do. I would develop a game plan to have them all paid off within a certain period of time. There's nothing panicked here because there's no desperate situation. But what you're experiencing is you finally are measuring risk. And mm-hmm. most of us, I grew up in the real estate business, Sana, so I 
you know, I, I understand. When you get in the real estate business, one of the things they do is they take a hammer and they break your risk meter. We don't even know how to measure risk once we're in that business because we just buy crap. I mean, it's just like we go get a – getting a mortgage to buy an investment property is like – that's the only way to do it in our minds. You can't do it. In, you can't do it otherwise. We've just people in the real estate business really believe that it's just not true, but we believe it to be true. So, yeah. um, but what you're you're starting to feel the weight of the risk that you've taken on that no one in your world talks about, but you're starting yeah. to feel it, and that's what how you ended up talking to us. So, yeah, what are these properties worth total? You owe a million on them. What are they worth total? Total, I would say about five million. Good for you. Okay. So that's a great equity position. I mean, obviously, you're in a 20% loan-to-value ratio, which is phenomenal. That That's not a big risk position, but there is a million dollars worth of problems there. So yeah. what I would do is say, I'm going to pay off that million with my income and with the sale strategically of one or a couple of these properties over the next five years. Okay? And it might be you can just sell one of them. And be clear and clear the rest of them. And that'd be pretty cool. And then from there, you pay cash for all of your additions to your portfolio. You don't use home equity loans ever again. You don't borrow again to do that because you've got great cash flow when you have no mortgages. And that, that's going to be the way to go. Yeah, it's just going to be in a really great position out there. So now I'm curious, Dave, so you wouldn't sell – why not sell one of the houses – and knock it out that way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I, I'd pick out one of those properties. Okay, gotcha. All right, all right. And, and or the income. But I and mean, the income. if it takes you two years to do this and instead of a month, right. that's okay. Okay, gotcha. There's nothing yeah. on fire. Yeah, of but course. But you do want to aim at having a debt-free portfolio mm -hmm. and aim at and stick with the promise to yourself that any additions to the portfolio we're doing with cash. Yeah. As soon as we get first and foremost, get to debt-free, then when we add something later, we're going to do that with, uh, you know, without borrowing money to do that. And, and folks, I understand that the get-rich-quick real estate world and borrow all you can on real estate out there is out there. It's always been out there, and I understand it's real hot again that Tic Tac has made it really a big thing again. And uh, you guys get on there, and there's all these goobers on there that have no life history. That, you know, they're 14 years old, and they're, I'm buying houses, and I got it figured. It's a bunch of crap. You don't. I mean, when I was 22 years old out of college, I started buying houses, nothing down. I bought $4 million worth. I had a $1 million net worth by the time I was 24 years old. I made $250,000 cash taxable income doing flips in 1984. That's $20,000 a month in 1984. And you don't put that in today's dollars, that's a half million dollars a year. Okay? Now, I don't know what neighborhood you grew up in, but the neighborhood I grew up in, we called that rich. It was fun. I was having a blast until I found out about risk. And the banks called our notes, and we spent the next two and a half years of our life losing everything we owned. We were sued, we were foreclosed on, mm. and with a brand new baby, a toddler, and a marriage hanging on by a thread, because my poor wife thought she had mar married Sir Galahad, turns out it was Goober. And there we were, bankrupt. And at 28 years old, I got the opportunity to start completely over, because I followed the exact same crap you people are seeing on Instagram and TikTok. And you're all walking around acting like you're smart. You're not. You're straight up freaking stupid. Quit doing it. I walked it. And don't tell me you know more. Listen, a man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an opinion. This is ridiculous, you guys. I've walked the exact path that some of you are signing up for right now. Now, not her. She's got a different situation. Yep. She's moving away from the debt. She's calling about that. But this zero down, nothing down, I'm going to get rich in real estate is absolute bull crap. Broke people shouldn't buy real estate. It makes them broker. That's why they call them brokers. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Our Ramsey Show annual listener survey is now live. We want to know your favorite parts of the show, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear more about, uh, whatever it is, we want to hear from you. Two ways to participate. You can text SURVEY to 33789, or you can go to RamseySolutions.com slash SURVEY and fill out the survey. Either way, if you sign up, you're going to be entered to win a $500 gift card. Taryn is with us in Pennsylvania. Hi, Taryn. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hi. Um, so I recently got my bachelor, or my master's degree. I got it last year. Um, I'm in the field of education. And a position had opened up at my current job um, that's in my area of expertise. So I had applied for it. I interviewed and I found out that they want me for the job. However, um, they had to clear it with my, basically my supervisor's supervisor before I was allowed to transfer. Um, And my supervisor waited um, about a week before answering and said that I could go, but not for over three months. Um, And so I'm kind of torn because I, you know, I'm thankful that he said, yes, I could transfer. Um, But it's also just seems like an excessive time to keep me. Um, and so what I guess the my reason? question is, um, I'm in, I teach special ed, so it's kind of hard to find people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I assume that's it. Um, but, you know, I mean, the end of January, that seems like just a long time to hold someone. Um, no, it and doesn't. So I guess yeah. I'm just no, it doesn't. Wondering yeah. It's not a long time. Three months is good. No. How old are you, Taryn? Uh, I'm 27. Yeah. So I was 27 a long time ago. And a long mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but and, and the reason I said that, Terrence, because this is not a judgment on you. It, three mm-hmm. months is a really long time for a 27-year-old. But for old guys like us, I'm here to tell you that three months is not a long time. And they really are probably in a crunch. But instead the of assuming The children that you ask, take care of have to have someone to yeah. take care of them if yeah. you're leaving. That's right. They have to line that up. And those people are hard to find. Is that not true? It is true. We have a lot of new people coming, um, but I guess with that, um, yeah, you were getting I to a question. That they're kind of debating whether or not they are going to go with me or go with someone else because of the time frame. Um, they're kind of like not in a hurry, but they would like to get someone to fill the position shortly. So, okay, um, so I all guess, within the same district, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it's at a cyber school, so it's all within the same company. Yeah, so they should be able to go. One part of the company is willing to release some of their talent to go to the other part of the company as soon as they're able to do a backfill. So we will wait until the backfill comes in. We do that inside of Ramsey all the time. But if we want to, if you want to move inside of here, we don't move you until we have your workload covered. Mm-hmm. But we don't also don't fill the position out from under you. We'll say you can go over there as quick as we get somebody hired to take what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So and what, if you can get that yeah, assurance, I, then you shouldn't have any issue with this. Agreed? Yes. Yes. Okay. If I if I know they're willing to wait, I guess that's one thing. No, I mean, you're hired, not, you're hired for the new position as soon as your backfill comes in. Now, if you can get uh, that prom, sure. if you can get that promise, three months is reasonable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're not. So what are you wrestling with? If she can't get um, that I promise, guess, should she stay? So. Yeah, and I guess because we're also, um, like, my husband and I, we're in baby step two. We're hoping to start homeschooling our son. So I'm like, oh, you know, if I if I don't get this position, because it really is my dream job, if they're not willing to wait, um, I would like to leave the company um, because I just don't. And I don't know if that's a crazy idea, too. But if I don't get that job. Well, it's not about um, it's not about crazy. It's about you and your husband talking about if that's a viable option with you being in baby step two. That's a pretty big hit. You're just going to quit. And I I just wouldn't. I wouldn't if it were me. I'd say, wait a second. I want to try to maneuver this thing. I I think you've got to sit down with the the uh, the new opportunity and say, hey. I need to know. I know that my supervisor has cleared this, but with a three-month wait, are you guys willing to do mm-hmm. what Dave said and say, all right, we're signing on the bottom line. It's your position, and as quick we'll, as, we'll as wait. As quick as we can get a backfill, right. I'll be over there. 
because that's reasonable. It is reasonable. It's also reasonable for the people moving that you're moving to to wait and not damage their own company. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't quit. How big of a hit would it be if you go home and, and, and homeschool and you're not making money? How much? Yeah, I mean, it would be, I mean, before tax, like $65,000. So I would not recommend that. Income. I would not recommend yeah. that. They haven't done anything yeah. wrong. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. not an ethics breakdown here, and they're not a horrible people or a horrible company. Uh, they do need okay. to give you some clarity. I don't disagree with you on that. I'd get. I'd like for them to give you the okay. lockdown on the position. But I, if they won't give you that clarity, they still haven't done anything wrong. They're just sloppy is all. And if you want to work somewhere else, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but you might jump from there to a place that's totally toxic. You know, that could happen real easy. Yeah, it happens Because this is not, what you're describing is not unreasonable or toxic in any stretch of the imagination. Now, if they lie to you, cheat you, hold you back artificially with no solid reason, we're just screwing around with you because we just can, that's toxic. But this is saying, hey, we got to fill this position. These little kids need a teacher. And if Taryn steps out, we got a big hole over mm-hmm. here. And these children are not going to be taken care of. That's very reasonable. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's responsible. Yeah. Um, it's not saying, I'm going to politically hold you back. It's saying, hey, yeah, well, you can go as soon as we get your work covered. And then the other place, the other side, the place you'd be going needs to give you the clarity and say, mm-hmm. all right, the position's yours. As soon as they can get the backfill over at the other place, we'll, we'll, we'll bring you over. But, and we're, you know, we, we understand the time horizon might be mm-hmm. as much as three months. We've done that here, Ken, and sometimes it's even been more than three months. That's right. I mean, that's the reality of workflow. And you have to understand that and you have to be patient. I know it's hard. My goodness, it's it's hard to be patient at 37, 47, or 57, uh, certainly 27. But we've got to keep our eye on the big picture. And here's the other thing I just want to mention very briefly, because if we see an opportunity like this and it looks like it's right there, but then there's a hurdle, there's reality sets in, and and if for some reason she doesn't get this – we shouldn't hang up, hang up the cleats. We shouldn't just say we're done, we're out, we're, we're not going to play anymore. Uh, because I'm take that, my toys and go home. Yeah, because it, it, it represents the dream job, but it's not the only dream job. That's the key. The dream job is already a bit of a unicorn for a lot of people. That's why I've actually stopped using the phrase a lot, because I think for some people, they think, well, it's the uh, playing in the NFL or something, something that's not realistic. It's not. The dream job feels like a dream because you're spending most of your day using what you do best to do something you really enjoy to produce results that you care deeply about. That is really a dream for most people because the alternative to that is a nightmare if you do it too long. And so don't get hung up on that was the dream job. That can really devastate you and knock a lot of people off that path. And and I would really caution all of our audience on this to say, okay, it looks, it smells, it feels like it, but if it's not it, that's okay. Don't think no. Think not yet, not here, and keep moving forward. And that's what I'd want her attitude to be if this doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, by the way, dream job is what you said. It's doing things you love with the gifts you have. That's right. To accomplish something and see traction yes. in something you're passionate and care about. That's right. You know, I've got the dream job. That doesn't mean that last week didn't suck <laughs> right right because you have it some did. of those days it actually did. Right. last week kind of sucked you know and it was a long week and i'm really thankful that i don't have last week anymore i'm okay, glad it's gone it. yeah I'm glad I, i'm glad i've got next week instead right. but but this idea that you know every you know like you're not going to run into conflict in your dream job of course you're going to run into conflict in your dream job you're not going to run into uh crappy people while you're doing your dreams oh yes you can be assured that if you run into people you're going to run into some crappy ones just count on it you know i mean you can be you can none of this is going to get easy just because it's your dream job like you don't it's all rainbows and skittles or something Mm -hmm. it's just that that's just crap it doesn't work that way boys and girls this is the ramsey show
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Andrew and Emily are with us. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey. Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. Where do you guys live? Weatherford, Texas. All right. Welcome to Nashville. How much debt have you paid off? So we paid off 55000 Good for you. And how long did this take? Six months. Six months. And your range of income during that time? We started at 110 and finished at 130. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And I work as a pediatric nurse. Very good. Good for you. Great careers. How long have y'all been married? One year. Okay. So right after marriage, you look up and you got 55,000. What kind of debt? Two cars and student loans. All right. And you start off with a burden here and you say, all right, we're clearing this and we're clearing it fast. Tell me the story. What happened? How'd you get turned on to us? So I've known about y'all for a while, and um, we had been talking about this for kind of what we wanted to do, and I started reading the Total Money Makeover, and was it was kind of firing me up, and then uh, we celebrated her birthday on December 14th, mm-hmm. and... I pretty much came home and was like, let's pay off the car. And after that, it was like, what else can we pay off? What can we switch around in our budget to make it work for us? And I think that's kind of where it all started for us. Ah, so you got the financial guy straight. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm just impatient. (laughs) Very impatient. Good. I like it. it. We're going to actually do this stuff you're reading about. Yeah, (laughs) good. Very cool. I got to know, Dave, was the the newlywed groom, did you figure out I should probably make her happy with this, or did you push back a little bit, or were you all in? What was going on when she came home with this idea? Well, it's pretty hard to, once she has her mind set to something, it's pretty hard to get her off. And so... (laughs) We had been talking about like, hey, what are we going to do with this? And then she said, hey, I want to pay off my car. And then right after that, I said, hey, I've got a truck, a nice Chevy Silverado. I think I think we probably should sell it. And that can knock off a lot. And Ooh, then you sold your truck. I sold dream truck. In sold Texas. It. In, in Texas. Texas. Oh, wow. That's, it. Not, that's not that. That's real. Yes, sir. Sold that's it to real. buy a car, too. Yeah, and people, <laughs> I bet you had people saying, you have lost your mind. Yes, sir, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, how much was the truck? It was, the balance when we sold it was about 27000 So it was half of this debt. Yes, sir. And wow. then um, we rolled that into, and then the Ultima was what we bought, and we, we did not pay for it fully. We ended up, that became a new part, and mm-hmm. so... Uh, the next thing was her student loans, and then the car was last. And so we took it from Total Money Makeover, tried to get fun, creative. So we created a whiteboard. It had the total amount, how much we had paid. And then um, every time we paid something off, we would play the song Jump Around from House of Pain. Yes. Yeah. And it's one of Dave's favorite songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We would just, like, blast it through the house and, like, just... Just dance. Why not? Like just, yeah, why not? That's great, though. Got to knock out another one. That's awesome. I love it. Dance party. I love it. Yes, sir. That's fun. Good job, you guys. Thank you. Okay, so you're married a year, and you're debt-free. How's it feel? Pretty good. Pretty good. You sold the truck. (laughs) Yes, sir. Was it worth it? It was worth it, 100%. We can buy the truck truck later. You'll get another Mm -hmm. truck. That's what I, exactly. You're going to get another one later. And another one, and another one, and another one. Yes, sir. It's not like you're only going to own one truck in your life. I mean, come on. Wow. That's awesome, guys. Way to go. All right. Young married couples out there listening, they're going, how do they do that? Well, they sold the truck as part of it. How do they pay off 55000 in debt? What do you tell them the secret to getting out of debt is? Um, I would say accountability and just staying to it, even though you're like, oh, man, I'm losing my truck and may not be able to do all the things that other married couples are going to do. Just sticking with it mm-hmm. now you can do any, now you, you can do anything right mm-hmm. yes sir yeah i'm curious i mean you guys are newlyweds this is exciting so what are you dreaming about now that you're debt free like how what's the mindset looking forward to the rest of your life well, we're on baby step 3a right now okay and then baby step 3b would be next so we uh the next step is definitely to buy a house yeah. okay um, and so that's where we're looking for short short term and then Long term, whatever the Lord has in store for us, we don't really know. Yeah. And, and how old are you two? We're Both twenty four. Oh, oh my it. goodness! Wow, you're in such good shape. Yeah. You're gonna be, you're gonna be so stinking rich. It's unbelievable. The math on things when you're twenty four, guys, it's just oh, it's awesome. Yeah, I gotta ask you guys this: What's your, what are you aiming for for that first time home? What price range? 
Ooh, at this rate, we have a really tiny um, rent home, which mm-hmm. is perfect. But at this, I think we can make any home a home. So I. Good for you. Yeah. Meaning you're not going to get locked into something over your skis there. You guys are going to be smart about this. Yes, sir. that's great. Love that. Yeah. Wow. That's the big draw for a lot of young couples. They want to get that really nice house yeah. like mom and dad had growing up. They're like, no, no, no. You know, I was listening to a guy the other day, and he said the secret to building wealth is marrying well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you could marry a princess who yeah. demands an Instagram house. Yes. Or you could marry Emily who says, I can make a home anywhere. Yeah, I thought the same thing, Dave. That's 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 a freaking home run. That's awesome. Yeah. By the way, Andrew, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have told you, you clearly outmarried yourself. And that's a good thing. That's a compliment. You yes, know? sir. We're glad she has poor judgment. And, and so that's, <laughs> you have done well, sir. No question about it. That's what I say about my wife. That's, that's not personal. Yes, sir. It's yeah. very true. <laughs> Well done. Very well done. I'm proud of y'all. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. And who was cheering you on out there? Well, we had a lot of people supporting us. Um, it was kind of, it was a good amount of people. I mean, family, friends. Um, it was always interesting when we would tell people what we were doing. Uh, just the reactions were varied. Most people knew about y'all. Some people didn't, but they were like, wow, good for y'all. Um, and so it was just a good community of supporters. Yeah. They walk away shaking their head. He sold his truck. <laughs> He sold his truck. There was a lot of that. There was a lot of that. He sold his truck. (laughs) Oh, my God. As if you're never going to get another truck. I mean, you're going to be so rich, you can have five trucks. I mean, who cares, you know? Unbelievable. Not really, Emily. He won't do that. No, actually, they'll be wealthy enough. They can get five trucks. It won't matter, honestly. I mean, you, I mean, you want me to, the math is like oh, no, I know. I just 40, 50 million trucks, bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's just like crazy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Way to go, y'all. Way to go. We're proud of you. I can tell you that. Yes. And uh, we know that the sacrifice you made is temporary, although painful. And you got there, and now you get to go anywhere you want to go. Talk about buying a house. Talk about the next steps. Very, very cool stuff. We've got the Live and Give box for you. It's got the Baby Steps Millionaires book in it. For sure, you'll be in one of those. And uh, the Total Money Makeover book to give away to one of your friends. That This is how I did this. I just did this right here. And the Financial Peace University membership as well. Enjoy them. Give them whatever you need to do. That's what they're they're, there. Our gift to you guys to say uh, congratulations and thanks for coming to Nashville to do your debt-free scream all the way from Fort Worth, Texas. Andrew and Emily. Wow. 55,000 paid off in six months. Making 110 to 130. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Right quick, go Rangers. Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt free. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's a power couple right there. Yep, 24. Power it's couple just, looking for a place to happen. Isn't that true? It's extraordinary to see young couples committing early on. First six months of their marriage, they're like, okay, we're getting after it most powerful wealth building tool that allows you to get out of debt yeah. and build wealth and be unreasonably generous is contentment. Yeah. Contentment allows you to sell yeah. your truck when everyone thinks you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Contentment says I can make a home in anything. These are the these are the verbs, the words that people use when they're functioning in contentment. Godliness with contentment yeah. is great gain. Yeah. And that's definitely what they're walking in. And, you know, that's a decision. Mm -hmm. It's a decision of where I place my values. Am I defined by where I live, what I drive? If I'm not, then suddenly I'm what's called content. I can get nice things and I can not get nice things, but either one's fine. And and it works out either way. And that's, that's the beauty of where they are. And the irony is it's the key that's going to make them extremely wealthy yeah, and put them right. in a position to be outrageously generous mm. and help people everywhere around them. They're going to be, they're an amazing couple. Yeah. Just right. amazing. And congrats, parents. I'm sure they're watching oh, and listening yeah. both sides. Way to go. Mom, Mom dads, and dad. Both of you. Y'all crushed it. This yeah. is a great, great couple. Yeah. Just slam dunk. Yep. This is The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Psalms 128, 2, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Claude McDonald said, if hard work is the key to success, most people would rather pick the lock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the truth. Uh, Katie is with us in Concord, New Hampshire. Hi, Katie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Oh, God, this is actually happening. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Breathe, Katie. It's going to be good. <laughs> Holy moly. What's up? How I can like we help? I'm with gratitude. This is crazy. Okay. Oh. Um, first, I need to thank you for um, everything. Thank you. How can uh, we help? Um, so, okay, Dave, you have to promise not to yell at me. Um, my boyfriend and I <laughs> have combined it, all of our debt and our bank accounts. And we are, um, Denzel and Tense on, um, our debt. Mm-hmm. Um, we have about, uh, $89,000 left. Mm-hmm. Um, we have smashed out all the credit cards. There's no more credit card debt, which is very freeing. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we're working on student loan and auto loan. Um, but my question is, um, my, my family and I have recently joined a church that, um, you know, my children and I were baptized in and, um, Every month, you know, uh, we have our budget meeting, you know, and um, I'm the planner and he gets to change my plan, which I don't really like very much. But um, my question is every month after month after month, um, the church column um, is a bunch of zero because um, I feel like I don't really have anything to give. Uh, And I just I want to be able to give. Um, but ten percent of our income is. When are you in, getting married? No. <laughs> Ask him. Um, I've actually had this conversation with him. Um, I've actually been married twice before. Mm-hmm. Um, so in his. How long his have you mind, been dating? We've been dating for over a year. Okay. Right. If you if you're willing to completely combine your finances, you should never do that unless you're married. Yeah. And then you should do it immediately. But this is very yeah. dangerous for you. Very yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if either take your finances back apart or get married. What was his response when you brought it up to him? Marriage. Um, so we, we talk about it. We, we want to get married. His thing is, like, he wants to be able to provide picture perfect for me. Um, What's his? I, Sorry, I that's not an option. Yeah. There's no such okay. thing. I got a hunch here real quick. Katie, what, is, what does he make income-wise, and what do you make? Separate those. Um, okay. So I make um, one, two, three, like 4000 a month, okay. give or take. Okay. What does he and make? And he makes about uh, 55 Okay. 100 roughly. Okay. And I actually have more debt than he does. Okay. Well, number one, let's just back up, back the bus up here. Either yeah. get married in the next 30 days or separate your finances. Yeah. This is very okay. dangerous for you. Mm-hmm. I'm scared for you. Okay. You should not be paying his debt. He should not be paying your debt when you're not married. You are going to get, it's going to put a strain on the relationship. Something's going to blow up and one of you is going to get left at an unfair disadvantage due to this broken Mm -hmm. system that you should not be using. I'm not yelling at you. I just want good for you. I love you. I want you to win. Then the, then once you've made the decision to either separate your finances or combine them because you're getting married immediately, Mm -hmm. not next year. Okay. Um, then, I mean, this is not something you need to plan for two years, paint or get off the ladder. And then, um, then, then once you decide all that, then we can come to your question how do we put you've just started attending church how do you put church in the budget well you don't put church in the budget you put god and generosity in the budget and for those of us that are evangelical christians the first stage of baseline generosity is a tenth of our income going to the local church but that is an act of worship that's an act of uh, uh, of not trying to buy God's favor. He, he doesn't need your money. 
he says to do this because he wants to turn you into a generous person because generous mm. people are much better children and you and I are better children of God when we are generous. And so he's trying to turn us yeah. into that. And that's what the tithe was established for. It's not established as a rule. It's not established as a shaming mechanism by religious zealots. It's established mm -hmm. as a method of teaching us the power of generosity when it's a regular rhythm in our lives. And so were I you, I would live on 90% of my income and be giving a tenth of my income to my local church if I'm a person of faith. That's not a condemnation, but it's what I have done for 40 years, and it's worked really, really well for me. And there's no guarantee you're not going to have bad times. There's no guarantee of anything. It's just an act of generosity, and it's teaching us the rhythm of generosity, a baseline start. And I was in a church when I was going bankrupt, Katie, in my 20s as a baby Christian, and um, there were people there that would say things like, well, you know, God protects you if you tithe. And I went, uh, missed that part, went bankrupt. I missed that. Well, and then I had one old blue-haired lady say, well, you just didn't have enough faith. And I said, honey, I didn't have anything left but faith. They took everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, come on. Yeah. So uh, broken doctrine, broken theology. Mm -hmm. uh, but And so you can get twisted up in all that toxic garbage, or you can just say, hey, I'm going to live life with an open hand and I'm going to be a generous person because generous people smile more. Generous people are less often depressed. Generous people are better at relationships because who wants to be in a relationship with a selfish person? No one, right? And so is, the act of generosity is a, becomes a character quality and it changes your whole life. And so, yeah, I'm going to put that at the top of my list of things to do. Absolutely, but not as a legalism rule. Yeah. Absolutely right. That is really scary doctrine, and it's what drives a lot of people away from the faith. If you think you got to give God money to get something good from Him, that is that is a recipe for frustration and desperation. Yeah, as if He needs His your permission right. to bless you. Right. You know, and and as if His blessing is dependent upon you giving Him a nickel. Mm -hmm. Good gracious! As if He if He wanted your money, He'd take it. There'd be a greasy spot where you were sitting. I mean, He's God. <laughs> I mean, come on, He doesn't need your money. That's not the point. The point, and, and so don't be shamed by it, Katie, and don't be going, because I heard the guilt. Oh, I, every month I feel bad because there's nothing in the church column. Well, let me put something in there. But don't do it out of shame. Do it out of, hey, I want to learn a different way of living mm -hmm. that includes generosity, and it includes a smile, and it includes being married to this guy you've fallen in love with and combining your whole life not just your money. And uh, let, 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 let's do the whole deal. Let's go game on. But don't pay someone's debts ever, and don't let someone pay your debts that you're not married to. You're going to get yourself in a pinch. been doing this a long time, and I never see good of it. It ends, as Deloney says all the time, this ends in ash. Ooh, that's a pretty harsh statement, but mm -hmm. it does. It just the th thing burns to the ground. So I, I want you to win, kiddo. We love you, and I'm happy that you and your family are in a good church. And it sounds like you're starting your journey there um, and, and or resetting your journey there. That's awesome. Any of that, I'm cheering you on. Ken's cheering you on. We want you to win. Um, and uh, no, we're not yelling at you. That's not what we do. Um, we, we yell at concepts, not people. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, d don't, you know. Uh, those of you that are shacking up and aren't getting married, you can do that if you want to do it. I won't be mad at you. I'm not going to yell at you. Um, but don't combine your money. Don't combine your money because you're going to get burned. Don't buy a house with somebody you're not married to. You're going to get burned. I get it all the time in here. It's all the time. And you're just setting yourself up. You make dumb decisions like that. You get yourself burned. We don't want that for you. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus.
Hey, it's Ken. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey baby steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.